All right, so the last area of lighting that I want to talk about will be miscellaneous equipment. This is going to be accessories and other equipment that we often use in lighting. Uh, the first thing I want to look at is what's called a cookie. Now a cookie is uh, a pattern. As you can see, there's a guy holding one up in this picture here. Um, they've cut a pattern into whatever that material is and they actually just hold it in in the light beam and the light passes through it so instead of getting uh, just light you're gonna get a pattern of light uh, cast onto the background now in this case it looks like they wanted something to look like a stained glass window uh, in a church so they they cut this pattern out of the cookie to look like uh, the light was passing through a stained glass window and then onto the set in the background. So that's what it's used for. Uh, you could do, if you wanted it to look like light was passing through blinds in somebody's house, you could do something like that with a cookie as well. The next thing uh, is gel. Uh, gel is a color media that we put in front of light. Uh, the light passes through it and then the light becomes that color. Uh, it used to be made out of gelatin, which is why we call it gel, but today it's made out of uh, plastic that can handle high heat. Uh, but, we, but like I say, we still call it gel. It is no longer made out of gelatin. There's no animal product in there. Um, so they come in many different colors, uh, and you can use all these different colors uh, sometimes uh, for particular purposes in a video. So very commonly used in lighting. A color frame is the next thing. A color frame is what you would put your gel in because gel is very flimsy and if you slid it into the front of a uh, Fresnel spotlight for instance it would just slide right out. It's gonna buckle and slide out. But with a color frame you put it inside the color frame which holds it um, so that it it's, keeps it straight and then you slide the color frame into the front of your spotlight and it will stay there. It's not gonna fall out. Uh, so that's basically its whole purpose. That's all it does. It's just something to hold gel straight uh, when you put it into the light. Diffuser. I mentioned this before. A diffuser is uh, something that you put in front of the light. This one in this picture here, as you can see, is a fabric diffuser. It's probably specially designed in order to handle high heat. Uh, not all do all fabric could be used for this don't don't just put some kind of cheesecloth in front of a of a spotlight because you could start a fire doing something like that but specially designed diffusers uh, would go in front of the light and then the light goes through it and it spreads it out and it makes it softer so that's that's what a diffuser would do the next uh, piece of equipment I want to look at is the reflector board uh, a reflector board is something you would use when you were doing exteriors. You know, you're outside. The sun is your primary light source. Let's say you are doing a, a close-up on somebody and there are harsh shadows on one side of their face because the sun is causing a harsh shadow. Uh, with the reflector board, you would position this much like you would a fill light. Uh, you would catch the sunlight and bounce it back in from the other direction so that you can lessen that shadow. Uh, so that's what a reflector board would allow you to do is to catch the sunlight and bounce it back into the scene from another direction. Uh, so that's an example of what you would use it for. They, they come in different colors. So sometimes if you want it to look warmer, uh, you could use a gold tinted reflector and then that would give you a little bit warmer of a light. Uh, sometimes they're white. Uh, the cheapest way to do this, uh, if, you, if you don't have a budget for something like this, uh, but it's something that you can easily do, even with no budget, is to just buy yourself a, a large piece of white poster board and use that. That will work. Um, so when you are getting bad lighting because the sun is so strong, uh, you just need somebody to be able to stand to one side of the camera with that poster board and you can try to catch some of the light and bounce it back in in order to make the shadows less severe and make the picture look better overall. Really harsh shadows are never good looking in video. Alright, so barn doors. 
barn doors. They slide into the front of a, a lighting instrument and then you can see it has four flaps from each direction and you can fold those in to cut off part of the light beam. So let's say you turn the spotlight on and it's covering more area than you wanted it to cover. You're like Oh, I, I don't want it going right there. I want it going everywhere else, but this, there, that corner there, I don't want any light in there because I'm going to have somebody standing there that I don't want to see. Uh, so by adjusting the barn door, uh, you could cut off part of the light so the light didn't get into the corner that you were trying to uh, keep dark. So that's the purposes of a barn door. Uh, that's the last piece of equipment. I do want to mention one thing about handling quartz bulbs if you are ever using uh, lighting instruments that use quartz bulbs quartz bulbs burn very very hot you can easily uh, set something on fire with one you could easily burn yourself with one so when you are done using them they take time to cool off before you can pack them away uh, if you were outside and you are packing lights up after a shoot don't touch them right away when they are burning and when they are hot, try not to jar them because if you do, it's going to lead to uh, a shorter, uh, shorter lifespan. Uh, you do not want to touch the glass of the bulb even when they're cool because the oil from your fingertips will, will be left on the surface of the bulb and then that will weaken the glass there when it gets hot and they will pop, they will explode. So uh, you will uh, then you will need a new bulb. So uh, do your best to not touch that when you're changing bulbs. You usually wear cotton gloves uh, to do that. Uh, now LED bulbs don't have this problem, and as LEDs are taking these jobs away from the old style quartz bulbs, yeah, you may never actually run into these. Uh, but if you do, don't touch the quartz bulbs. They heat up very quickly uh, and become dangerous. Uh, to touch or to, to as a fire possibility so be careful with them once you've turned them on and that is the last piece of uh, equipment and in this case equipment advice as far as the light bulbs go uh, we have for lighting